Guys, what I've got is a problem with my PSU, my benchtop power supply. I really love this thing, but it's finally died on me. Let's see if we can fix it. What we've got is if I move up the current level, I've just got an LED hooked up here. And you can see we jump immediately to 999 on the amperage display. And that is clearly false. You can see I can throttle the amperage here and the display just goes right to max most of the time. Hey there, it started working again. <laughs> Imagine that. And then we're at 99.99 here. So we've got an intermittent problem. Let's see if we can figure it out. Let's go ahead and get this thing open. So this is what we got with the cover off. Uh, it's pretty basic inside. These things are all pretty much the same. They are pretty dodgy construction. And that's the first place we're going to start. We're going to give this thing a once over and then the other thing we're going to do real quick is we're going to check all these electrolytic capacitors in here. Even though this thing doesn't have a lot of runtime on it, that's a good place to start with all the consumer electronics. We'll see if we can figure this out. So what I did is I took my ESR, my equivalent series resistance meter, and went ahead and checked all the electrolytics on board. I didn't find any that were clearly defective. Remember to discharge them first, so short them across, otherwise you'll blow up your nice new meter. We're good there. Unfortunately, I thought it was going to be real quick and easy, but let's have a look and see what else we can find. So just having a look across the surface of the board, we've got some dodgy traces going on here. Uh, particularly this one caught my eye. Um, really, really poor connection here possible. I'll see if I can get this maybe a better angle on it maybe for you. Yeah, there, maybe you can catch that. It's It looks like the trace may be partially burned too. So we can just quickly measure this. I'll show you how. So what I've done, I fired up the supply here, and in the background I actually have the LED running over here. We want current flowing in the circuit. The first thing I did was quickly ohm that circuit out, and guys, that's basically, an ohmmeter is a virtually useless measurement uh, on a circuit board, because if there's any connection there at all, it'll show a reading. Um, if you're lucky enough to have a low ohm scale on your meter, that can be a little bit better. But what I'll show you here is something any meter can do. Put it on volts DC, because I know that bus is basic DC voltage. What we're going to do is measure across this trace, and with any luck we can get from one side to the other without causing a short to an adjoining circuit, and we're getting nothing for voltage drop across there. So we'll just quickly check another one, make sure we're good, we've got voltage there. What we're doing here is we're measuring the voltage drop across there. My fingers are in the way. So if we actually had a poor connection, we would see a voltage potential difference between the two points, and we don't. So that trace is intact and capable of flowing the current at the time. So we can rule that out. Let's move on to something else. Guys, this is where I'll advise you to be safe and stay within your own skill level, is to poke and prod things. These things have questionable uh, manufacturing, so odds are we may have a bad solder joint here, especially when you saw this work one minute and not the other. So uh, what we can do is I'm wearing 1000 volt gloves as well as I have an insulated screwdriver here. Guys, you should never touch a live circuit, but in electronics sometimes it can be found to be necessary and you can just take and gently poke and prod things. This board is always going to be suspect to me because it's going to maybe have a bit of vibration. It's not supported here and we can just tap on things. We can tap on the front of the display. No change. So this board that is on the front here, I won't turn it around. Uh, if you rewind you can see it. We can start poking at this front board and there we go. Look at that guys. As soon as I touch that, there we go. There's our perfect amperage reading again. We are in business. So now we have a pretty good idea where the problem lies. It's in this front plate. And if I get my tongue just right, it might even stay working. There we go. We're working. The minute I give it a tap, probably, it's going to stop. We found the source. Let's have a look. So we're back to a depowered state. I've unplugged it. 
Remember this capacitor here is going to be charged right now. I haven't re-discharged it, so I'm going to do that before I go poking at this board barehanded. But I can see it's not a whole lot of solder joints here, really, guys. Uh, if push came to shove, we could just brute force this and solder them all. But what I can see, and I don't think I can show it on this camera, I can see at least one cracked solder joint right here. And it's sort of hard to see, especially since it's underneath that component, but I can't get much of a better angle. You can see one dodgy one here on the cap, and there's a couple of more. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and touch those up. And just like that, guys, we're back in business. The display is working perfectly. The LED is fired up. That's all it takes. Simple solder joint. We're back in business. Hope this helps you. Hope this helps you on your power supply. I did touch up a few others off camera. I basically touched up a whole pile of them. So when in doubt, guys, just solder them all. Good luck in all your electronics ventures.